What's going on there guys? Uh, good evening, the Earthmaster here on the uh, live stream uh, with an update video on this party night, Friday night, December 10th, 2021, about 627 California time, that's PM, and uh, latest quake out there, a 4.9 earthquake striking around the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, right up against the uh, Philippine Plate, it looks like. Go ahead and check out the latest information here on the usgs map showing some activity uh, continuing out here along the western pacific heading uh, westward obviously towards the indonesia area philippines area and working its way up around the china area over the last 24 hours we did see some further movement along the kermadec trench kermadec islands a 30.3 kilometer deep 5.2 striking earlier today also some further movement and some deeper activity around the, um, that's at 4.9 right there, around the uh, Mariana Islands, right into the uh, Philippine Plate, it looks like. The uh, subduction zone, Mariana Trench, 127 kilometers for that uh, earthquake, pretty deep movement there. Also some activity northward, south of Tokyo, and some activity right here in the uh, little quiet area that we've been watching, the 4.8 into the uh, Kuro Kamchatka Trench. Also some movement over here around uh, a volcano along the Aleutian Islands. Seen a little bit of up uptick with a 4.5 earthquake. The Alaskan uh, Volcano Observatory upgrading the Davidoff Volcano to a yellow. And uh, looks like there's some volcanic activity kind of kicking up over the last couple days. A swarm of earthquakes uh, within the vicinity of that volcano. Uh, they're stating it may be associated with volcanic unrest. So over the past three days, a swarm of earthquakes has occurred in the vicinity of uh, Davidoff Volcano. The largest earthquake to date happened this morning at about uh, 1945 UTC time and had a magnitude of 4.2. And that's going to be this, Let's see if I can get my mouse to work here. That's going to be the, uh, Let's see if I can get that. Uh, well, it looks like it may have been upgraded a little bit. It looks like it was so 4.5 let's go ahead and check out this map once again here they're listing this as a watch or uh advisory i mean let's go ahead and see uh exactly what it's stating here yellow means a volcano is exhibiting signs of elevated unrest above a known background level uh, after a change from a higher level, volcanic activity has decreased, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so right now we're sitting at uh, yellow and advisory. Due to the earthquake activity kind of ramping up around the volcano uh, within the last couple days here, I want to show you guys the seismograph here. If I can uh, look around and find it, here's some, um, some instruments here to see if I can get this to pop off here crazy night here in the house <laughs> a couple little ones running around all crazy let me tell you so there's the seismic activity here pretty well defined earthquake activity uh, there at the um, Davidoff volcano obviously within the last few hours some uh, pretty significant earthquake activity and prior to that of course there was uh, some movement as well Let's check out the uh, 48 hours here I think this is about the same uh, let's see here, 24 hours. So definitely uh, some activity kind of ramping up at the volcano there. We'll keep an eye on that. Of course, this comes after all the activity happening around the globe and off the coast of Oregon, obviously. A lot of movement along the Pacific Plate recently, let me tell you. So what's going on out here along the Blanco Fracture Zone as of the last 24 hours only? three earthquakes with the latest one uh, earlier in the day today a 4.5 along the Blanco fracture zone uh, we have seen some further movement at the southern end once again at the uh, Cascadia subduction zone a 2.5 striking along that area at the south very southern end up here through the Washington area a little bit of movement outside of Mount St. Helens as well um, I did see that. Let's go ahead and bring back the all magnitudes here. I could have swore we had seen, maybe that was yesterday, I've seen a couple of small earthquakes around the Mount St. Helens area. 
Uh, I was watching that on the seismograph stations as well coming in. But uh, at least today here on the map, uh, Mount Rainier and also low activity uh, way up here out in the mountains of nowhere. Uh, 11 worth, it looks like a 1.5, a 16 kilometer deep earthquake in that region. Uh, some activity once again around the Lake Almanor area, looks like, right underneath the lake, a 2.9 and a 1.6 just south of Chester, California. Uh, looking at activity kind of dwindling down here, folks, once again along the uh, eastern crest of the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, even the Ridge, Ridge Crest area looking pretty quiet up and down the board here. California looks uh, below um, background activity when it comes to earthquake activity in a 24-hour in a, uh, uh, period. Intermountain West regions getting in on some activity up here to the north. But uh, overall, seismic activity along the west coast looks to be uh, diminishing at the moment. Uh, or at least over the last 24 hours, no major swarming. No further activity in the Gulf of California. Uh, some movement out in the Pecos, Texas area. Uh, but even there, it's kind of uh, toning down a little bit when it comes to the uh, magnitudes. Out here in the Missouri, Williamsville, Missouri, 100 or uh, 13.7 kilometer deep, 2.5, right outside the New Madrid fault system. Still watching that area pretty closely there. I don't, I don't think we should uh, completely forget about that fault zone. Uh, also a little bit of activity around the Puerto Rico Trench outside of there, <coughs> it looks like. 54 kilometers for a 4.4 down around the Puerto Rico area. Uh, a couple changes over the last 24 hours with seismic increase along the South America region along the Peru-Chile Trench with uh, some uh, deep earthquake activity occurring around the uh, Peru region and also further <coughs> to the south there around Argentina. Some activity there kicking up in the subduction zone. 194 kilometers for that 4.8 striking earlier. Uh, what else we got here? Hold on one second here. The South America Trench or the uh, South Sandwich Islands Trench. There we go. See if I can get that correctly. A couple nights of no sleep. That will definitely do it to you. Uh, a couple fours kicking off, including a 5.0, but some of this activity rather deep here, folks. We're looking at, uh, at least over the past couple days or so, some deeper movement kicking up into the South Sandwich Islands Trench area. Once again, this is actually a pretty considerable, considerable uptick in earthquake activity. Of course, this is probably all aftershock sequences, but... Uh, even though it's been a, a little bit of time since that large uh, earthquake sequence here a couple months ago. 8 point something, I can't remember what it was, 8.1 struck down here. Uh, there's obviously aftershock activity, but we can see, uh, you know, some pretty good sized earthquakes following uh, that larger one, even months down the road, even years down the road. So kind of watching this area pretty closely for uh, potential movement, especially with the deep earthquake activity occurring into that trench. Uh, over here, this side of the world, looking uh, not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of activity recently. I'm still looking at the west coast, folks, for uh, potential further movement. Let me go over here to the trimmer activity map here, real quick, and look at the trimmer. Look at this movement here: 133 epicenters. The trimmer once again uh, into the southwestern part of Oregon also northern California last night we had about the same let's go ahead and check out last night's uh, date about 185 so a little bit more last night but they were confined specifically to this area of Oregon and the Cascadia subduction zone uh, but tonight uh, or at least over the last uh, throughout the day today activity spreading out from southern Oregon uh, into parts of northern California. So the southern end, if you kind of picture this in your mind, uh, the Juan de Fuca plate here, um, uh, interaction here with the North American plate, kind of southern end, the very southern end of this region, uh, seeing some trimmer activity. And that could be uh, the reason why we're seeing a relief here along this area of the plate uh, the Blanco fracture zone. I think uh, if we're getting a little bit of trimmer activity kicking down here, uh, it could be relieving some stress uh, that has been building up here along the uh, Blanco fracture zone. Of course, with all that swarming activity, I kind of want to see if they got a total tally 
on the activity out there. I know they haven't added the all magnitudes out there. I don't believe they have. Uh, and the all magnitudes would consist of probably hundreds of 2.0s and uh, hundreds more uh, in the microquake range. But I'm not going to go into that again tonight. It's just something to watch, uh, watch and see if they do add it. Uh, but we're looking at at least over that swarm 102 earthquakes uh, of uh, pretty decent size right so a bunch of fives upper fives and fours and a whole bunch of threes but all the twos and ones and and the ones below that are all missing but i guarantee you they are there uh, but i believe that uh, the trimmer activity here kind of still relieving uh, the uh, pressure out here along this area of the zone but i am not 100 percent certain if that's good or bad news when it comes to the buildup here of stress along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, I think that could be, uh, could be bad, uh, especially if you think about the uh, dipping of, the, of that section of the plate down here underneath the North American plate. When you get some trimmer activity, uh, that means slippage, right? Down dip, downstream. It's obviously kind of springing up this area once again, winding it up, if you will, bending it. Uh, and adding that further stress onto this area of the Cascadia. And once again, the trimmer confined to the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So just, just remember that. Um, so I'm still going to leave up the earthquake update uh, or the... Uh, good Lord, I'm, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. I can't wait for bedtime. I'm going to leave up the uh, earthquake watch for the West Coast, at least tonight. See what it looks like tomorrow. Um just due to the uh, fact that we're continuing to see a uh, couple, still some activity off the coast of uh, Oregon and also the trim, trimmer activity along the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, what do we got here in the Yellowstone region? Some, uh, some, a little bit of small microquake activity it looks like here around the northeastern part of the park. Other than that, things are very calm and quiet at the Yellowstone super volcano. Things in the, uh, Solar weather department, pretty quiet as well, folks. It's not even really worth checking it out, but we will just for the uh, for fun, right? See what's going on there. Not a whole lot of sunspots. In fact, there is none. Coronal holes look pretty small. Uh, it's just, wow, clear across the board. Green, 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 zero, zero, zero. A lot of nothingness going on there with the sun uh, at the moment. I uh, wanted to check Hawaii real quick. There's not a whole lot going on either. We've seen this area die down rapidly uh, following the, uh, well, the, about the same time when the Oregon activity died down or off the coast of Oregon, that swarm. We've seen a lack of uh, uptick in Hawaii as well. We were looking at some further movement kicking up uh, well off the southeast flank region in a pretty large swarm down to the Loihi Seamount. Uh, the submarine volcano but that has since died down over the last uh, 24 hours it looks like including the activity off the coast of Oregon but uh, we're still kind of watching it here folks we will be keeping an eye on it and uh, we'll go from there have a good night folks stay safe out there it is uh, Friday night and uh, I'm uh, behind some locked gates I'm safe and sound and that's where I plan to be. No going out for me. I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> as soon as it gets dark, I'm inside. Have a good day, folks. Good night, I mean. And uh, stay safe. We will chat you guys tomorrow sometime. Peace out.